It is the 41st millennium. Mankind battles for survival across the universe, besieged on all fronts by the heretic, the mutant, and the alien. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. One faction of Space Marines stands amidst the chaos, the mightiest of the Emperor's warriors, and a beacon of light in the darkness. This legion the Ninth Legion of Adeptus Astartes, the Blood Angels. Good evening! It would probably help if I turn my camera on before I try and go live, eh? Good evening, good evening. How is everybody? Nice to see you. Rexer's here. Hello, Rexer. Go for it, Painting Maximus, Miguel, Sarah. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, Kevin, good evening. Uh, Sean, good evening. Cool, we've got five lists we're going to look at. Phil, missed you. Good evening, hello. Uh, we've got five lists we're going to look at tonight. Uh, we're going to be live for about an hour. Uh, I will try and give my two cents on each of the lists. Bear in mind, anything that I say, I suppose, is my opinion, so feel free to ignore it. Also, appreciate it if you would continue to uh, test your lists with my, with my comments in mind before you just go wildly changing them, uh, because changing them based on what some random person on the internet said is probably not the best idea. And then... Um, 
if you do want to submit a list for a future army list show, all you have to do is when the stream ends, in the comment section, just drop your list like uh, like you see on this the screen here, like an export from Battlescribe, um, etc, etc, etc. Am I multi-streaming? Yes, should be. Um, cool. Okay. Um, let's start by looking at Speargrass 2015. Uh, here's a list developed to 1500 points. Uh, he had a Calidus and some Eradicators, but they didn't work out too well, so he changed it for a Vindicator tank. So let's look at the list, and then let's see what he had um, afterwards. I prefer if you are submitting lists, if you at least tell me how many points each individual unit is, because that helps me a lot, I think. Um, so we've got Chaplin with the Jump Back, we've got Lamartes, we've got the Sangonor. It's quite a lot of characters for 1500 points. Um, off the top of my head... Sanguinar and Lamartis is 250 plus the jump pack chaplain, maybe like 330. Quite a lot of points for um, 330. Mm. Yeah, I'm out. 330 is really what I take in like a 2000 point list. So it feels like a little bit high for 1500 points. Um, we've got intercessors, good for securing objectives, uh, making things sticky, that sort of stuff. Uh, Blade Guard veterans, very good, but you didn't say how many, so I assume just three. Um, a Death Company Dreadnought, very good if you're strategic reserving it. Um, twin Fists, Melta, Heavy Flamer, Magna Grapple. I feel like you're probably best putting double Heavy Flamer on the, um, on the Death Company Dreadnought because it's going to be shot and it'll kill thing, it'll kill armor and stuff anyway in melee. Uh, and you can get that six inch consolidation move. So I think I prefer having double heavy flamer. I guess a melter gun is fine, but I think personally I prefer double heavy flamer. I do like the magra grapple. I think that's the right choice. Five death company with jump backs infernals and power fists. Another ten with jump backs infernals power fists. Everybody, everybody's running them. Everybody knows that they are the best. Five scouts. You've got some shotguns in the scouts, and you've got double vindicator. I mean, that's a pretty solid list, right? Uh, everything there is pretty decent. The Death Company are obviously very decent attached to the two characters. The Vindicators are pretty decent. They do have short range, but they are good. The Scouts are very meta. Intercessors for stickying. It's it's a good list all round. Uh, good evening, uh, Akushla. How are you? Um, so the Chaplain with 5-man Death Company, Lamar is with a 10. The Sangwar is in reserve to back up either the 5-man Death Company, Blade Guard, Scouts, or Intercessors. Uh, a sort of fight first, upgrade... Falling in from the heavens. Yes, obviously the Sanguinary does that. Uh, Death Company Dreadnought in reserve to threaten enemy armor or monsters from the board edge. Uh, and the opponent's backfield from turn three. You've got the 10 man Death Company and two Vindicators to do the real amount of damage. Joe, you know I think a five man Death Company unit does a good amount of damage. I think Blade Guard Veterans and a six do a good amount of damage as well. Intercessors hold the backfield objective, the scout score. Just one scoring unit. Mm, I guess you could argue the Sanguinar could be a scoring unit as well, I suppose, after he does the shenanigans. So maybe maybe you do have two scoring units. Uh, Five-man Death Company score or bully chaff units. Five-man Death Company don't just bully chaff, right? They're str hitting at strength 10 now, and it's 20 attacks for the squad um, with full rerolls to hit. So statistically, you get 88% hit rate. So... The five man death company is essentially 20 times 0.88. 17 and a half hits. If you're they're led by a chaplain, they're plus one to wound. So strength 10 plus one to wound. 17 and a half on average wound rolls is not. You can't discount these guys. These guys do a lot of damage for what you pay for them. 210 points it is for the death company plus um the chaplain and the five man. It's kind of it's it's why I run the second five man squad with the chaplain in my list as well as the ten with the mortis because that five man do a surprising amount of work. Uh, the blade guard plug holes are contest objectives with backup of the sangora. Yeah, I mean I think blade guard are probably a great contesting unit. They're not really a fast. Well, they're not a fast moving unit. They're a good contesting unit. I don't think there's too much wrong with this list. Um, He didn't mention if he was taking a, a chain sword on the sergeant and the scouts. You can do that. I think it's worth doing. Um, 
But beyond that, there's not much to change here. The only thing to say is Vindicator tanks are weak into matchups where you need long range shooting. Because they, they don't have range, right? They've got 24 inches. So that's their big weakness. We kind of know that. I think Double Vindicator is still very good. If you oath of a moment a target, two Vindicator tanks will generally destroy just about any target in the game. They just don't have great range. But we know that. Um, Death Company Dreadnought versus the Brutalis. I think you have to take the Death Company Dreadnought because I don't know how you get the Brutalis into melee range, Rexer. Right? Because the Brutalis Dreadnought has no way of shortening those reserve charges. So you're just running it across the centre of the board and hoping, crossing your fingers and hoping it doesn't die. If it's just running it across the middle of the board, it's going to get killed. 100%. Um, the best answer to six Toughness 13 vehicles and three Tech Priests. Whoa. I don't know what what um what the hell is running six toughness thirteen? I mean even centurions don't do well against toughness thirteen. Mm, maybe assault assault centurions would actually be the most effective unit though, because they got the rerolls to hit and wound. Um Imperial Guard. They're really running 6 Toughness 13? Jesus. Yeah, I haven't played against that. I suppose Vindicator tanks would be good against that as well, because they are strength 14. Um, what do you think about dropping the Vindicator for uh, Devastator Centurions? I think Devastator Centurions are amazing in Gladius. They're not so good in um, Sons of Sanguinius, because the thing about Devastator Centurions is occasionally they'll get locked in combat and you want to fall back and shoot, and you can't fall back and shoot with Devastator Centurions in uh, Sons of Sanguinius. You can in Gladius, because you can call Tactical Doctrine or you can pay the CP for... Oh, one second, my door is... You know what, though? Just thinking about that, I do have the idea. Against six Toughness 13 vehicles and Tech Priest, thanks so much for the $2, you want three Death Company Dreadnoughts in reserve. Death Company Dreadnoughts are going to be the best thing for dealing with that. Especially, you want to just take the Furioso Fists. So you'll get rerolls to hit, you'll get rerolls to wound, you'll be strength... Um... I think you'll be strength 14. I think you'll be strength 14, but you'll be twin linked. Let me check that. That's what I would do. Three Death Company Dreadnoughts in reserve, because each Death Company Dreadnought, assuming they can make their charge, which is an 81% chance from reserve, uh, you'll kill. You'll pretty much kill them, because the second they attack you, you'll get to swing a second time. Yeah, it'll be strength, you'll get 6 attacks, strength 14, minus 3, 3 damage, and you'll get to do that twice. Because they all attack you back, and then you'll just, uh, frenzied reprisal. So you'll get 12 attacks, re-rolling hits, re-rolling wounds, hitting on 3s, wounding on 3s. Uh, even if they're on a 2-up base save. Is that what Lehman Russ's save is these days? Um, yeah, three Death Company Dreadnoughts in reserve, yeah. Someone said it as well, that uh, that comes in just under 500 points. In fact, five points under 500 points, so you can actually do that. Uh, if I did a click Imperial, go I meant to click Imperial Knights. Yeah. Astro Militar. Uh, Lehman Russ is a two-up, so statistically, just do the maths. 12 hits times 0.88. Um, it would be times 0.88, and then they would only save on fives. 
So they fail 66% and then it's 3 damage. So each Death Company Dreadnought will do statistically 18.4 damage to them. Uh, oh, they'll have a 4 up because of the Tet Priest. Okay. Um, so it'll be 12 times 0.448 times 0.88 times 0.5 times 3. Okay, so... Uh, not times point zero three uh, divided by point three um, times three. So statistically, death company dreadnought coming in from reserve, making a seven inch charge. Hopefully, with the reroll, we'll do fourteen damage to them. Uh, bring some las cannons, shoot them with your bunch of las cannons, whittle them down, then bring in your three death company reservers. Um, that's what I would do. Uh, but there's not much to say that's wrong with the Speargrass list. I think this is a fine list. Uh, I think most lists... I think for for uh 1,500-point list, I think this is totally fine. What would I suggest to make up to 2,000 points? Maybe a Land Raider with... A Land Raider Redeemer with Assault Centurions is very good. Um... Made the Blade Guard a six man squad and added Judas ER to them, something like that. Uh, what other things do I really like at the moment? A Ballista Dreadnought, it's long range, holds objective, does good damage from long range. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I really like at the moment. What else have I got on my list? You, you maybe want a second squad of scouts there to get it up to 2,000 points. And Yeah. The other option could be a Calidus Assassin. Very useful, very tricksy, very good at scoring points. Um, add more Death Company. Dreadnoughts add more Blade Guard. Yeah, I think Blade Guard are amazing in sixes. If you're just going to try and like sit on an objective and hold it center board with Blade Guard, um, I think with the Judas ER they're amazing as well. I'm um, doing a video at the moment about how much damage the Blade Guard, six Blade Guard plus the Judas ER do when they get charged, and, and and the numbers are going to surprise some of you guys. It's crazy actually how much damage they can do when they get charged. Ball Predators as well, yeah, that could be an option. Ball Predators are good at just distracting the enemy. Shut down. They shut down infantry movement. I like the Redeemer a lot, though. I think a Land Raider Redeemer is really useful. I don't know if you guys have been watching my battle reports the last couple of weeks, but both times, or both weeks in a row, the enemy have gone hard on my Redeemer, and I've just instantly smokescreened it and armor of contempt it. I've, I've blown 2 CP on it. I think I've done that multiple times, and every time I've done that, it's really scuppered my opponent. They've really struggled to drop that Land Raider, because when you've got a Toughness 12 vehicle that's ignoring 2 AP... So even if they hit it at minus three, I'm still saving on a three up. Um, it can kind of be a little bit obnoxious. Okay, uh, we're on to Stuart's list next. Uh, he's in a slow grow event this year. Four events. We're at event two, which is 1,500 points. Can I get some tips on this list? All right, let's see what we can do. We've got a captain of the jump pack, artisan of war. We've got a chaplain of the jump pack. We've got Judas ER. We've got Sangaree Priest of the jump pack. Okay, heavy intercessors. I like them a lot. 10 Assault Intercessors, I assume they're attached by the Sangaree Priest. 6 Blade Guard, attached by the Judas ER, no doubt. Um, the Chaplain attached to 5, Death Company. 2 Gladiator Lancers and a Redeemer. Okay, uh, so I assume that the Blade Guard plus the Judas ER are probably inside the Redeemer. How do we get this up to 2,000 points? Is that the question? Captain and the Sangaree Priest are the 10-man jump unit. Okay, the Chaplain with Death Company in reserve. Blade Guard with the Judas ER and the Redeemer. Is it too heavy on armor? I don't own the Martes as I'm a recent converter to Blood Angels, so limiting the Primaris range, the Death Company are converted from the new Jump Marines. Oh, annoying, because I was going to say the way you make this list into 2,000 points is you add Lamartes plus 10. Um, if you don't own Lamartes, I mean, I'm running double Land Raider. You could have Centurions in the other Land Raider. You could have another squad of Blade Guard in the Land Raider. Um, you could have aggressors in the second land raider. There's lots you could do there. Uh, Red Rampage only gives lethals when you uh, when you get charged. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Correct, yes. If you play Red Rampage when you get charged, you only get lethal hits. You do not get the plus one to wound because Lance requires you to have made a charge move. Um, Max actually proxying Mephiston with the Tuna CRs, uh, with the Blade Guard in a protest. Yeah, I mean, I guess good protest, Max. Uh, yeah, you want to add some scouts here because you don't have enough scoring units. Um, is this too heavy on armor? No, because I run two Predators, which are both 130 points, and then two Land Raiders and 2,000 points, and it's it's seven games undefeated now, so um, it's fine. Um, it would be good to get more Death Company in here. Death Company are our best unit. The 10-man with Lamortes is very good. It's super hard to recommend you buy them right now, because the rumours are that they're going to be replaced very soon. So I guess if they're going to be replaced very soon, I would add Ballistus Dreadnoughts, um, Aggressors, potentially. Centurions, if you've got them. A second Land Raider. Uh, maybe not a Redeemer this time, just a regular one. Uh, I love the Heavy Intercessors. Um, I've had a couple of Scout Squads for scoring and stuff like that. This isn't bad at all. Um, And yeah, when you're new, when you're new to Blood Angels, it can be a real pain, especially with the Primaris. We've been in limbo with the Primaris for a few years now. It's it's been kind of annoying. Um, do we think that we'll have the ten Power Fist jump at Death Company when the Codex comes out? Nobody knows. Everybody's scared that we'll lose it. History says that Games Workshop are moving away from those sort of. Units where you can have everybody with a power fist. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, if they remove that, it's going to be rough. Because a huge... If they remove that, I guess we're going to we're gonna see a buff to the Sanguary Guard. And hopefully it means the Sanguary Guard can be playable again. Um, yeah, it's going to be rough when that happens. Okay. We're looking at a list from Crozier next. Um, he's inspired to make this list because he said, because I was saying 12 Blade Guard could be good. Uh, so he's got a captain, he's got Judas ER with Icon of the Angel. It means if infantry fall back, they have to take a desperate escape at minus one. Uh, Lamartes and the Lieutenant with the Combi Weapon. We get two six man squads of Blade Guard. We get the three Assault Centurions. Um, you should probably drop the Bolters on the Sergeant of the Centurions. This is probably minor. But drop the bolters and replace them with the uh, launchers, whatever they're called. Um, what are they called on centurions? They're not auto launchers, they are centurion assault launcher. You should probably lose one Hurricane Bolter and take an Assault Launcher because the Hurricane Bolter is only going to be, at best, like six shots of Bolter fire and the Assault Launchers give them their grenades keyword. Centurions are probably going to be in close, so at some point if it just gives you the option of paying that one CP to do the mortal wounds, sometimes that's a big deal. Um, you've got the 10 Death Company with Jump Packs, you've got the 5 Death Company with Jump Packs, you've got a Land Raider and a Redeemer, and you've got Scouts, and you've got a Vindicator Tank. This is very similar to the list I'm running, actually. So you could have... I guess you could have all 12 Blade Guard, plus one Judas ER, and plus potentially a Captain inside the Land Raider, and then the Centurion's another one. Uh, Lamar's with 10 Death Company. Captain Judas Star go with 6 Blade Guard in each and the Redeemer. Centurion's go with another Land Raider. The Lieutenant holds the backfield. 5 Death Company will be in Deep Strike. The Vindicator will potentially start in Reserve. That's probably the best thing for the Vindicator. Just look in there. So the, death, the 5 Death Company of their own are not led by a Chaplain. So they need to stay close to Lamartis as well. I'm not sure if I should take out the Enhancement and the Scout Squad to be able to include two squads of Inquisitorial Henchmen, because I feel like I don't have quite enough Action Monkeys. Um, my list has th three. Thank you so much for subscribing. I didn't even see the banner pop up there. Um, that might have been a Grot subscriber. I still haven't got my OBS working 100% yet since... Um, 
since the, the hard drive died on me, so maybe uh, if you did subscribe and I didn't see it, thank you. Uh, let me think about this for a sec. We have... Um, why do I think I've got three action monkeys on my list? I've got scouts. I've got a Calidus assassin. Is that... I was going to say, is that it? Calidus assassin, scouts. Hmm. Heavy intercessors. All oh, right. Yeah, I guess my heavy intercessors can perform actions as well. Like, I've got one unit of troops that are just going to... So I've got three units that, that are there for scoring. So you got scouts, and that's it, really. Well, I suppose you could argue the combi Melta lieutenant can do some scoring as well, potentially. Uh, but not too much. What other enhancement do you have by our Icon of the Angel? None. You take out the scouts, you include two squads of Inquisitorial, Inquisitorial Henchmen. Scouts are really, really good. And I guess this is why I run the Kalidus Assassin, because she is really, really good, because you get to pick her up every turn as well, same as the scouts. So having two units that you can pick up every turn and put down anywhere on the board is really, really powerful. So I guess, like, if you just, if you raw compare this to my list, this is probably why I have a Predator Destructor, which is 130 points, rather than a Vindicator tank. So I think, in reality, I'd probably rather run a Vindicator tank. I feel like a Vindicator tank does more damage than a Predator Destructor. Um, but, by having the Destructor, it means I have more pick-up-and-put-down-every-turn units, which score me points, which in turn actually mean that I win the games. Like, I might, I might not kill as much stuff, but this week I got 100 points against Rukari, you know? So, like, it, it doesn't matter if you're not killing everything if you're getting 100 points every game. So, um... I think you want... I like having two units that I can pick up and put down every turn. I think that's very strong. I think if you've got three, you might be starting to border on overkill, but two is amazing. Um... Everything else looks good. I just, yeah, it'd be tricky. I don't know how you, um, I don't know how you fit that second unit of scouts or that, or, or Vindicator into this list. But yeah, this list really isn't far away from mine, because I have the Scouts, I have the Redeemer, I have the Land Raider, I have the 15 Death Company, I have the Centurions, I have 6 Blade Guard, I have the Lamartas, I have the Judiciar. So the difference are... I don't have the Captain or the Lieutenant with the Combi Weapon, instead I have a Chaplain and a Kalidus Assassin. I don't have this second six-man squad of Blade Guard, I have a Heavy Intercessor squad. And then I don't have the Vindicator, I have two Predator Destructors. And this this is a good list. Uh it really is. Um I do I think I think one squad of scouts is not enough for scoring, I agree. Which is probably where I ended like I probably could have run a list like this Crozier, but I ended up on my list because I wanted the double scoring units. Speargrass, thank you so much for the uh, 349 New Zealand dollars. Man, what time is it in New Zealand? It must be like uh, 8 a.m. in the morning or something. Good morning. Um, we're not seeing currently Sangre Guard getting a buff. Yeah, I, I, I don't... I have no idea what's happening with Blood Angels long term. We're in a weird state where Death Company are much better than Sangre Guard. And weapon options are just weird because a lot of people are losing weapon options. I don't like we see a lot of people run the new assault marines. I don't like the assault marines at all because I guess, um, because, because they have no, no weapon options, right? So I, I'm not a fan of the new assault marines. Hey, Life RPG, how are you? I actually bought those new. 
new salt. Eight thirty in the morning. Good morning, Jizo. Uh, it's a refreshing chat this stream. Yeah, happy Easter, everybody. By the way, hope you had a good day with the kids. My kids had way too much chocolate. Like way, way too much chocolate. My, I actually took like half of chocolate bunny off my daughter, and she was like, "Yeah." Uh, Daddy, you promised after dinner I can eat this other half of the chocolate bunny. And I was like, you're going to bed in 10 minutes and I want you to actually sleep rather than um, <laughs> rather than lie in bed, wake for three hours on a sugar rush, right? Uh, yeah, I, I like taking two squads of Blade Guard, but I just don't know if you need two squads of Blade Guard. Like, while this feels stronger, it also feels like Losing, you're losing scoring units to do it. So I think I would probably... I feel like I probably have to get rid of some of these Blade Guard. I mean, I might even split, like... You already got the six Blade... You know what I would do, actually? I would keep, keep the list as it is. Lose a Captain. Lose Icon of the Angel. Put in a Kalos Assassin. And then just split this blade guard into two threes. Because the six is already there to be with the Judas ER. So just have two threes. Three blade guard are really good on their own. Because three blade guards still get 15 attacks at strength seven minus two two damage with rerolls to ones. So, like... Let me just do some quick math, right? If you were going to take three blade guard... Get five attacks each. You're gonna hit on threes, re-rolling ones. That gives you a 77% chance to hit. You're gonna fight toughness four marines. So you're gonna fight like a, an opponent's intercessor squad, for example. Um, so you'd wound them on threes, and then they would only save on fives. And everyone is a dead, is a dead model, right? So like three blade guard in the Sons of Sanguinis detachment. Statistically, if you use Sword of the Chapter to reroll ones, they do still kill five intercessors in one round of combat. So I think if you made those two blade guard into two threes, when you get to the center of the board with Land Raider, the six blade guard of the Judas ER jump onto the center objective because that's where they need to be. The two threes can fan out, they can do objectives, they could try and get behind enemy lines, engage on all fronts, nonsense like that. They can still do some killing against chaff units, which I've just demonstrated. And you lose that captain, and you lose the icon of the angel, and you put in the Kalidus assassin, and the Kalidus assassin is amazing because every single turn, you just pick her up off the board and put her down somewhere else and do another action, and she can't be shot because she's lone operative, and if for some reason they actually manage to charge her while she fights first, um, plus she lets you mess with your opponent's CP, like, she's just, she's almost an auto-include for me at 90 points. All right. That's what I would do, Crozier. Hopefully that's useful. J. Scott, 83. Uh, sorry, 85, 83. I guess he couldn't decide what year he was born in 85 or 83. Maybe he got confused. Maybe he's born in 84. I don't know. Or maybe he just has some random ass numbers after his name. Hey, Jay. Uh, <laughs> we are on a Son of Sanguinius list. Uh, the number uh, four for this list. Sorry, Speargrass. Did I say thank you so much for the 349? I think I did, man. Um... Maybe I've had too much chocolate today like my kids. Don't don't know what the hell is going on anymore. Okay, so Sons of Sanguinius list. Captain and Gravis armor with the heavy bolt rifle and the power fist. Happy Easter, uh, Reziel, how you doing? Chaplain with a jump pack. An Archangel shard. I don't think there's all that much value in Archangel shard, honestly. I thought there wasn't much value in it before the Blood Angels changes. I think there might even be less value in it now because you get... Anti-demon 5-up. Well, most of the time you're going to wound demons on 5-up anyway. Anti-chaos 5-up. The chaplain hits at strength 8. Right? Uh, Acrosius is strength 6 with plus 2 right now. That's that's a thing. So when would you ever get any benefit from that? anti chaos 5 up. I suppose unless the opponent has something that makes you like minus 1 to wound. But let's be honest, that doesn't come up all that often. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like that really doesn't come up at all in the games that I play. Um, chaplain. I'm sure he, I, I'm sure a chaplain's closing is a strength six. So it's strength eight in the Blood Angels attachment. Yeah. So I, I feel like there's very little value in this anti-chaos five up. The plus one to wound. Well, you're probably going to play plus one to wound on the squad. So I, think, I honestly think this is 25 points completely wasted. Because this, those twenty-five, that's that model only. It's not the whole squad that gets plus one to wound. It's just him, on his own. And if you need plus one to wound, you'll pay the one CB to get plus one to wound. So I think Archangel Shard is dog shit, for lack of a better term. Like I, I think it's a worthless enhancement. So I take the twenty-five points back from there to start with. Um, Arizona War, I guess, is fine. Give your Gravis Captain a bit more survivability. We've got Dante, we've got Librarian. You got 10 Assault Intercessors, you got 10 Intercessors. I don't see any reason to ever run 10 Intercessors. Uh, five of them, Sticky Objective. Robert, thank you so much for coming to Battle Brother. I do appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Make sure, If you are just becoming a member for the first time, if you type exclamation mark discord in chat, we have a discord and we also have a members only room that you can, if you sync your YouTube membership to discord, you'll get straight access to the members only room. If you can't figure it out, send me a DM, but uh, you should do that. So welcome. Um, intercessors. I don't see any reason to run them in a 10, honestly. Like they're not a good enough unit to justify running in a 10. They are a unit that will sticky stuff and shoot some bolters but most of the game, they're just going to hide and stand on objectives. They should be a five. Chrono saying says there's almost no situation where a plus one wound, to wound wouldn't let you wound on a five up. Anyway, the only thing Archangel Shard is okay is on a captain with dev wounds. But Chaplain doesn't have dev wounds, right? So it's there's yeah, maybe if the captain had potentially dev wounds, then the Archangel Shard would be good. But um, Chaplains don't have dev wounds. I guess the only character is it what the only character you could get that on would be the Judiciar or a captain with that special ability. But then I I don't like paying twenty five points for an ability that's only good against chaos, for example. So so eighty percent of the games where you don't play play against chaos, you wasted twenty five points, right? Like generally, I don't think that's a good choice. Um, I always build lists to be. Like, I like to build my list without knowing what I'm playing against. Because I, I always feel like if you're, if you're building a list for a specific case or for a specific enemy, then you're going to be weak against other enemies. So, it's a Terminator Ancient with a Thunderhammer. Okay, but it's still, I think, 25 points is wasted 80% of the time, so it's 100% it's worth not. Just don't ever take the Archangel Shard, I think. It's definitely not a, a pick you would take to a tournament. Uh, Intercessors should be running a 5 Three man aggressors uh, with bolt storm, frag storm is fine. I think that if you are not running gladius, I think I'd rather have flamers um, on the aggressors. But the bolters, I suppose, are fine. Uh, centurions with meltas, some flamers, a bunch of bolters. Same thing as I said for the last list. Make sure one of your centurions has the centurion all assault launchers, so you can use grenades if you need to. Death Company Dreadnought with Double Heavy Flamer is good. 10 Death Company with Infernal Pistols and Power Fist is good. Uh, two squads of Eliminators with a bunch of Laz Fusels. Fine. We don't see it very often anymore, but uh, I guess we don't see it anymore because Laz Fusels are only Strength 9, so there's a lot less targets they're good against, whereas last edition they were good against like lots of armor. I guess they're not that good against armor now. Um... But, I mean, they still hit on twos. It's basically like a poor man's Laz cannon. Not the end of the world. Not my favourite, but I guess I could get on board with them. I think I think Eliminators were a lot better last edition as well because they had camo cloaks, right? So that they were... Um, they used to get, like, plus two to their cover save. I guess they're minus one to hit now, which statistically is not bad. It's just not as good as it was, I feel like. So I guess Eliminators are okay. Uh, six Eradicators, an Infiltrator Squad, a Librarian Dreadnought. Okay, so there's a lot of units here that are going to be potentially teleported around, I guess. Like, it's a very infantry-heavy list. This is my first Blood Angels army. I haven't played since 5th edition. Commander Dante is the Warlord. 
Dante doesn't really have anyone to attach to. I think Dante needs to be leading a squad, honestly, because his abilities only kick in when he's leading a unit. I don't run Dante myself because I don't think he's very competitive, but uh, he does give plus one to charge and plus one to hit when he's leading a unit. So I feel like you probably want to find a unit that Dante can lead. It has to be Sangre Guard, Assault, Intercessors, Vanguard, Veterans. Right now, I guess I would go Assault or Vanguard, not Sangre Guard. I think they're overcosted. Uh, you got the Captain and the Gravis attached to Eradicators. Okay. Um, you got the Chaplain and the Jump Backer charge the 10 man for Deep Strike. You want to probably try and change that Chaplain with Jump Pack to Lamartas. Because Lamartas gives that 10 man Death Company amazing value. I'd say Lamartas is the best Blood Angels character. You could literally you could literally drop a There's only one change you make to this list is drop this enhancement, drop this enhancement, get Lamartas with a 10 man. That's the biggest win here for You don't even really need to change any of your models either, right? Because you could just say that's Lamartas, he's just a generic chaplain, but it is Lamartas in this list. Uh the Librarian is attached to the Salt Intercessor squad. Uh, the Librarian Dreadnought uh, deploys with the Centurions. Eliminator squads to provide uh, Overwatch with uh, overlapping coverage with the Infiltrator squad near the deployment zone. I mean, I don't think they're going to really provide Overwatch because you're only going to get two shots and you're only going to hit on sixes. So, um, Jay said he's just come back and he's not played since 5th edition. This feels like a, a list that might be better at home Last edition to me, it feels like um, it feels like last edition we could run so much infantry like this. However, this edition there's a lot of things that get like anti infantry two up and nonsense like that, so that can really um, they can really screw infantry armies over. I I I think it's nice you have the librarian dreadnought with so many infantry options, right? Like I think librarian dreadnought gets a ton of value. If you have a bunch of infantry to teleport around, I just think you need some armor these days. Some long range firepower potentially to deal with long range threats in the early game. And I don't think two squads of eliminators do that because they're only hitting at strength nine. So if this was me, I'd probably straight away be like, both those eliminator squads can go. Um, I don't think they're good enough at the moment. I would half the Intercessor squad down to a five man. And I was going to say, and that gives, with the two Eliminator squads leaving and that squad getting half, that gives about 230 points. I think that you then have an interesting choice is you would add a unit that Dante can lead to make him somewhat good, or I would drop Dante and add like some shooting to this list, like long range shooting, like I would add two Ballistus Dreadnoughts. If you've got nothing else, they're cheap to get because they came in the Leviathan box. Um, and then I'd probably also add like a squad of scouts. So we have something that can score every turn and just be lifted up, put down. There's so much, there's so much strength in that right now. Um, it's hard when people are coming back because you don't know what models they have and they're just sending me stuff but I don't see much value in a 10-man uh, intercessor squad, especially when you've already got infiltrators, right? Like, I would run one or the other if those were me. I also don't really know how you get, how you get 10 assault intercessors on foot across the battlefield. These guys will get chewed up before they get to the enemy because they're on foot, they don't have jump packs. So I might even drop that whole squad there. So if you drop that and half that and drop those two Eliminator squads, we're probably sitting at like 400 points. At that point, you could probably add five Vanguard Veterans to Dante and those two Ballista Dreadnoughts. And that would be feeling like a lot better to me. Um, or you could add the two Ballista Dreadnoughts, drop Dante, and add a couple of Scout squads. You possibly still have some points there to do something with as well. Um... Lamartes. That was my other thing. Yeah, you want to have Lamartes in this list. 100%. Um, I think the Librarian Dreadnought launching intercessors into objectives and sticky them. Yeah, I mean, on paper that sounds cool life, right? But in reality, 
most people can kill intercessors pretty quickly. If you launch intercessors forward, if you're if you're launching heavy intercessors forward, sure, they can probably survive some stuff. But if you're just launching toughness four marines forward, a toughness four marine with power armor, they die hella fast. To just about everything in the meta right now. Um so I just don't like it. And I, I played the Librarian Dreadnought at a tournament. Um if you're new here, which you said you were, Jay, you should probably watch my video. Uh, it's on the channel about my tournament experience with the Librarian Dreadnought. I'll show you what the video thumbnail looks like real quick. So if you're watching the stream, uh, it was this one. Um, this one here. Roll a two up for glory. 6th of 24th, Blood Angels. Um, we can just, do you know what, we'll just it. To pass it. We'll, look at the, we'll look at the list real quick. So I had aggressors, I had intercessors, I had heavy intercessors, and I was launching the heavy intercessors forward. I had death company, eradicators times two, inceptors, I had double vindicator in our pulsar, and I feel like I had one more tank. Oh, in the library and dreadnought, I guess that was my other armor. So that felt like I had enough stuff in that list to teleport around. So that was like one, two, three, four, five. Six units I was going to teleport around, so six units felt totally fine. This list has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ten units. So, so I would be looking to drop some of them and get some durability into your list. Um, okay, uh, we've got Kevin Camarata. Uh, 2410 for our last list for tonight. And um, guys, if you are enjoying tonight's video, please hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. Um, okay. So, this is Lamarta's Sons of Sanguinius list. Uh, we've got Captain of the Jump Pack, we've got Chaplain of the Jump Pack, we've got the Judiciar with Archangel Shard. We just talked about this and said it was kind of crappy for 25 points. I would lose it. We've got Lamartes, uh, we got the Sangri Priest with Jump Pack. We've 10 Assault Intercessors with Jump Packs, we've got Double Wild Predator, we've got the 6 Blade Guard, we've got the 10 Death Company times 2. I'm not sure you need 20 Death Company with Power Fists and Infernal Pistols, but I mean, they, they are our best units, so I guess maybe you need, maybe you go 20. Uh... The failed Psyker list in the tournament has left lasting trauma. It really, well, it hasn't really left lasting trauma, Speargrass. I just dropped it because it's a luck based thing, and I would prefer to not rely on luck because I think that, I guess, if you get to a point where you feel like you're a good enough player that you don't want to rely on luck, then then, then you should drop the library on Dreadnought, I guess. Because um, I kind of feel that like when you play a game of 40k, Yes, it's a dice game, but there's not really that much luck there, right? Because like, if you have one bad turn of shooting, then you'll probably make that up later in the game when you have one good turn of saves. Or your if your opponent has one bad turn of shooting, then you can expect them to have a good turn of shooting later, right? So like, I don't really think of 40k as a luck-based game. I really think it's a skill-based game. But you do have some lucky units in there, and I guess Library and Dreadnought is one of them. Uh, you've got infiltrators. You've got a redeemer. You've got one squad of scouts. And he said, "Love the channel, bro. I love comment. I love. I love count. The I was going to say, I love the community that we've got, bro. Um, I like it when people are just positive and nice. I think the whole world would be a better place if everybody was just nicer to each other all the time. Uh, okay, so we're going to have to figure this out. I guess he's assault. Sangry priest with jump pack is probably with the ten assault intercessors. The captain with the jump pack is also probably with the ten assault intercessors. The Judas Yard is with the Blade Guard. And then Lamartes is with the 10, and the Chaplain is with the 10. Okay, it's quite 200. It's, it's almost 450 points in characters. It's quite a bit. Um, 20 Death Company, a squad of Infiltrators, a squad of Scouts, a Redeemer, a Blade Guard, two Ball Predators. And the assault intercessors. Interesting. See, so so personally, I wouldn't run this, and I'll tell you why I wouldn't run it. Um, Mario says, "Isn't every charge over two inches based on luck?" Well, yeah, 
you could argue that, Marius. But I guess my point is, like, with, like, Rapid Ingress, for example, now you can bring opponent... You, you can basically make it where, like, you don't need to make long-range charges. With Land Raiders, you can make it you don't need to make long-range charges. So I'd almost argue if you are making a play that requires you to make a 7-inch or more charge, probably, like, a 7, then, like... You are, in in a sense, making the game luck-based for yourself, right? Like, um, so I play every game on... Every, every single game I play is on stream. I never really play off-stream unless I'm at an event or something like that. We could go back, like, through... Because like, I've won seven games in a row now with Sons of Sanguinius, right? We could go back through all seven of those games. And I, I bet you... Probably out of those seven games, I maybe had to make two charges that were, let's say, longer than like eight inches. And sometimes in games, yes, you get into a shitty situation where you're like, I'm too, you know, I'm, I, my blade guard killed the unit over here. They can't get close, so they have to make a really long charge and probably statistically most of the time you fail it. But I guess like the important charges that you're making in the early game or the mid game that are going to swing the balance of the game... Usually when I'm setting up my troops, I'm trying never really to have to roll more than a five, right? I don't want to ever really put myself in a situation where, with a re-roll, I have a like less than 95% chance of passing the charge. So that's what I mean about the game being skill-based, right? Like, I'm positioning my guys where 95 times out of 100, or 99 times out of 100, they make the charge. So is... Is the game a luck-based game at that point? Then I would say it's probably not. Whereas, like, the Librarian Dreadnought, there's nothing you can do. It's just, like, there's a 16% chance. It doesn't matter how well or how bad you play, there's always a 16% chance you fail your teleport. So if you need to make a 5-inch charge, it's an 83%. So then if you were to re-roll that 5, it would be 100 minus 83.33 times 0.833 plus the original 0.833 uh, the original 8.33, no, 83.33, sorry. So, like, if you're trying to make a 5-inch charge and you've got CP for a re-roll, you're statistically going to make that charge 97% of the time. So I guess, like, if you're, if you're setting yourself up for that, it's, what I'm trying to say is the skill and the positioning of your guys is much more reliable than just be like, well, I'm just going to roll my Librarian Dreadnought and hope on a 2-up the E teleports if he teleports great i win the game if he fails to teleport hey i lose the game and miss out on a podium position in the gt and i guess that's the way which is surprising right it, it, it actually surprises me a little bit that i did the library and dreadnought to tournament because uh, i guess maybe it doesn't surprise me maybe like the library and dreadnought is a crutch it's a very very powerful crutch and i guess i thought i could win an event using it that's fair, right? Like, if, 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 if Ultramarines had, like, a like Gilliman's really powerful, if Gilliman could win you a tournament, would you take him? Yeah, why would you not? You know? So it's like, I did that thing, I enjoyed it, I came super close, but I'm not going to do it again. Um, Rex says, just found your channel and have been bringing... Sorry, have been binging it while painting my flesh tears. Thanks for all the great content. Welcome, Rex. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Um... I always think it's a bit of ama amazing that we still, every single day, find new subscribers that never even heard of the Blood Angels Commander, because I've been doing this thing for like four years, and I I, I mean, <laughs> I was going to say I've been spamming out the videos, like, I've got a lot of them, like, uh, I think it said the other day that there's I've made 700 videos, so like, I think if you um, go into YouTube now and search like, Blood Angels Tactics, surely I'm... Um, yeah, like on video one, three, four, five, seven. Okay, I mean I can live with being one, three, four, five, seven, right? Blood Angel strategy. What am I? I'm one. Aspects. Oh, I'm gonna have to make more videos that that Blood Angel strategy. I'm only one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm one eight and nine. Okay, I need to make I need to make a video that just sits up here, like 
Blood Angel strategy. So if you see a video on the channel in the next few weeks with Blood Angel strategy, you'll know why. Uh, Philip says, always love the work you do. Happy Cadbury Day. Yeah, I've had way too much chocolate, Phil. I hope you're having a good day. And the Librarian Dreadnought for an individual game feels great. Over a tournament run, you're almost certainly going to fail a crucial teleport at some point. Exactly, Kevin. And I guess there's no way you can play to get round that, right? And I guess that's my point. Um... I'm looking to use a drop pod with six blade guard and a judasaur for turn one rapid ingress. Thoughts? Sure, but why not? I, I feel like the land raider, like drop pods are kind of wasted points. Plus, you don't really need to be making, like I don't make any turn one charges. Sometimes I don't even make turn two charges. Look at the game I played this week against uh, Drukari. I don't even think I made a charge till turn three, but I still got 100 points. Still, um... Well, technically the channel won't be, um, technically we won't be four years old until August. So, uh, I think it was the 1st of August. So, um, I guess my channel is January, February, March, April, May, June, July. So, we're three years, eight months old, I guess. Sorry, I completely derailed my thoughts here. Yeah, I was going to tell you why I wasn't going to play this list. The reason I wouldn't play this list is because I feel like the armor, the Redeemer, while we know it is a great tank, and the Vile Predators, while we know we, they are great tanks, they're all super short range, right? And I suppose you could argue the Vile Predator isn't that short a range because it moves 12, I think? I don't run a Vile Predator, I'm sure it moves 12. And then it's got an 18 inch flamer. So yeah, it's not um it's not that short a range, right? But like the game I played against Drukari this week was literally won because my army had eight LAS cannons and three hunter killer missiles that I could shoot 48 inches away in turn one. So my enemy that I played, the Drukari player, had a super heavy tank. Um, that can do 18 mortal wounds a turn. Um, why on earth he can do 18 mortal wounds with a tank that only is like 230 points is kind of beyond me. Um, but that's that's the rules, right? So it was this. It's the Tantalus, which is the big sort of like giant Forge World skimmer thing. Uh... And let's just look at it, right? Like, it's got uh, firing deck 16, so basically everybody inside it's going to be able to fire out. Uh, is space for 16 Drakari infantry. Uh, it has a strength 10 minus 2, 2 damage gun at 36 inches with uh, 12 shots. Uh, in melee, I guess it's got 6 attacks at minus 1, 2 damage. And when it makes a charge, Select one unit with an engagement range. On a roll of uh, D6, you can do up to six mortals. So that, combined with a potential tank shock on a strength 8, means yeah, it could do about 12 mortals for the tank shock. I believe there's also an ability that everybody inside can roll a dice, and they can also do mortals up to a max of 6 as well. So, toughness 10, 4-up four, uh, four save. And it does move 16, and it does deep strike as well. So it could potentially be rapid ingressed. And then be on top of you, charging you for 10 plus mortals and all sorts of nonsense. So I like, even though Blood Angels are a melee army, I like having 8 LAS cannons in my list on hard to kill platforms, like Land Raiders, like Predators, that can sit in cover 40 inches away. Um, And do a bunch of damage, right? Anyone running Armager Halverins for some damage 3 fire support? You should consider um, Predator Destructors. They have some good damage 3 fire support. And when they shoot infantry, they're AP2, which is one of the reasons I really like Predator Destructors. Um, I was looking at my Redemptor today and I can't ever for the life of me figure out why you take one. It's a weird one. I, I I used to swear by the three predator, uh, the three. Oh, what are they called? I used to always, always, always be running three redemptor dreadnoughts, 
last edition, but this edition I've just not been running them at all. I actually don't even know since I moved this office around, I actually kind of had a box that had three Redemptor Dreadnoughts in it. I think I've lost it. I mean, I can't have lost it because it was... I had three Redemptor Dreadnoughts, I definitely wouldn't have thrown it away because <laughs> they were all painted. But yeah, I've lost it. Like, I've literally misplaced it because Redemptor Dreadnoughts are just so... They're so not even on my radar right now. I, I don't know why you would run them. Some people really swear by them for the minus one damage, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just... Oh, there it is. It's over there. It's hiding. Okay. Yeah, I'm not running Redemptor Dreadnoughts at the moment. So yeah, because because of that, so I, I feel like Assault Intercessors with 10, pretty decent. I feel like Blade Guard with 6 with Judas CR, very decent. I think this Death Company is decent. I think the Infiltrators holding the backfield is decent. I think Scouts to score is decent. All these things are good choices. But then you've added in a bunch of flamers. So, I guess it's just a different style. You're going to roll all those tanks up the middle of the board. The tanks are going to take some fire firepower. You're going to try and flame, and then you're going to try and be on top of them with all your jump units. I prefer my... I, I roll one Redeemer up the board most games, and honestly the Redeemer gets, it's a bullet magnet and it gets killed very, very quickly, most times in turn one or two, sometimes in turn one. Um, something's got to die, right? Uh, so the Redeemer rolls up the middle and gets killed. And that's where I get some value from having some longer range shooting that can still be alive in the backfield and still be popping off last cannons or auto cannons every turn. The ball predators are just a different different strategy. Uh, they run up the middle, and then I guess they flame, and they shut down infantry, uh, and they can do some overwatchy things. I feel like... Um, I, it is, as iconic as the ball predator is for Blood Angels, I think if you already have one flame unit, like you've already got a redeemer, you can only overwatch once per turn, then I feel like you're probably fine enough taking some long, longer range shooting power. I don't think there's anything necessarily bad with this list. Like, I think all of it works. I just think I wouldn't play it because I think that my best, my best performances this edition have been when I've backed my Blood Angels up with a ton of high strength firepower. I did it with the double Vindicators in the Gladius list, and now I'm doing it with a Land Raider and two Predators in the Sons of Sanguinius list, and that's when I perform best. When when your opponent's got something that... You know, a, a good example, I suppose, is I played Death Guard maybe like two months ago. I was playing them with my Gladius list, and for whatever reason, he basically just parked three Predator Annihilators and three Plague Burst Crawlers right at the back of the board. And every turn, he just shot me with those Plague Burst Crawlers and the Predator Annihilators, and he kept them all super far away from me, so I couldn't really take them out. I just had, you know, like, five turns of a Predator shooting is 15 Las Cannons. I know a Predator only costs 130 points, right? 135 points, maybe, for Death Guard? I don't know. Um... I think maybe like a hundred. I'm sure a Death Guard Predator is like 130 points. So over the course of the game, he's shooting me with 45 Las Cannons, which I'm not returning any fire against, right? And that's my problem with not having long ranged firepower. Because if I'm going to just say, like, okay, he's going to be able to shoot me. Yeah, 130 points. So he had three of them. So he's going to be able to shoot me with 45 Las Cannons in this battle, and I've got I've got nothing that can really shoot back at that. He's going to probably try and his best to screen them so I can't get to them with my jump units. So how do I feel about the battle if I'm going to just take 45 Las Cannon shots unanswered? And I guess that is... That's where I sit. But different people have different ways of dealing with it. Some people might go more YOLO. I, I am overly cautious. Um... When I play 40k, I think. Because there was a game a few weeks ago where I absolutely destroyed Eldar. Like, 78 against 17. Um, I, I suppose in that game I could have probably had 100 points. But I sat, like, for two extra turns with a couple of units in... 
in hidden positions just to be able to react to what he does or what he did. And I guess that's that's probably where my, my playstyle comes from. So I wouldn't play this list, but I don't think it's bad at all. Um, I think it would be totally, totally playable. Um, Hey, Starters Party, how are you? Hey, half of you haven't liked the stream. Yeah, people people will like the stream before the stream ends. I'm sure they will. Um, I like Halverns for the Invon and the extra range and shots. Yeah, Halverns aren't bad, man. They're, I mean, Halverns are probably pretty darn good considering the points you pay for them, right? How many points is a Halvern now? Like, I know that they were, like, obnoxiously low-costed at, like, 45... I assume they put them up a little bit. I, I think they did put them up, but then I think they brought them down again. Um, Halvern. No, oh, they're 140. Yeah, I suppose for 140, what they got? They got a four attack auto cannon that is on threes. They got one melting gun, they got one stubber. You get 10 wound, sorry, toughness 10, same as the Predator. One more wound than the Predator. OC8, which is very, very good. Um, and potentially some anti-fly. I mean... Yeah. I don't know, I think I prefer a Predator tank, honestly. But yeah, I can see why you would like Halverns. It is nice to have a 5-up in Vun, I guess. Um, is a 5-up five five in Vun better than having two LAS cannons and a hunter-killer missile? I'd probably rather the offensive profile there and have the extra LAS cannons. And you're right, you don't get to benefit from Oath. Uh, and it's only minus one on the main. I, I think I prefer the Predator uh, Destructor, honestly. I've been run I, I think I'm the only Blood Angels player running double Predator Destructor. But I keep winning games with it. I'm playing a guy who beat me at the top table of a tournament um, on Wednesday night. Hopefully I can beat him, and, and if I can beat him, then it'll be eight wins in a row with this sort of mad double land raider, double predator destructor. Hey, we'll see. Um, I'm going to have to take off, though, guys. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that submitted their lists this week. If you want to get your list on the show, you know what to do just after the show ends. Put your list in the video description, uh, or sorry, the comment section. Um, I can hear my daughter is at the stair gate whispering out loud, Dad, Dad. So this really is time for me to go. Guys, enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on Wednesday night for the battle report. Like the stream. I'm coming, Annabella, one second. Uh, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. I'm coming, Annabella.